Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Houston Minority Business Development Agency's virtual subs and sandwiches webinar. Today, we have the city of Houston's Office of Business Opportunity with us, and certainly they are no, no stranger at all. I am Marchette Turner, and I serve as the director of the Houston MBDA. Our subs and sandwiches is one of our signature programs, and we are always excited to inform you about opportunities that await you. And we certainly hope that you're taking advantage of these opportunities. During today's webinar, please note that all attendees will be in listen only mode. There will be Q&A at the end of this session where my team and I will be asking the city's OBO officer the questions that you yourself type into the chat. This presentation is being recorded and will be made avail available via email to all registered participants. My MBDA team is here with me today. And of course, they are Ms. Jessica Vasquez, who serves as our program coordinator, Ms. Deirdre Sutton, who serves as our business advisor, advisor, Ms. Tanya McGilbra, another business advisor and our alumni client engagement specialist, and Ms. Joni Hall, who serves as a business trainer. So I'm always excited to have my crew with me. Um, I will now turn it over to Dr. Portia Jackson of the City of Houston's Office of Business Opportunity. Dr. Jackson, take it away. Good morning, everyone, and thanks again for inviting me here to speak to everyone here about doing business with the city. And um, so as explained, I'm Dr. Portia Jackson, Business Development Manager with the City of Houston's Office of Business Opportunity. And uh, we can go to the next slide and the one after that. Here's my contact information. So if you have any questions about what is mentioned today, feel free to reach out to me. You can scan the QR code and connect with me on LinkedIn, as well as my email address and my phone number. Email is always best to reach me. Next slide. So a little bit about the Office of Business Opportunity. We are the serve as the advocate for the city of Houston for our small businesses, mainly our marginalized businesses. And we assist in four different areas, our OBO Solutions Center for those who have questions on permitting, resources, and connections, and education and mentorship. We can connect you with those resources. We're the certifying agency for the city of Houston, as well as we have a contracts compliance division that follows up on all the contracts that our certified firms are performing on that have goals. And then we have our business development programming where our main education piece lies. So think about signature programs, workshops, all those resources to help you grow and scale your business. Next slide. So today we're gonna to be talking about business, doing business with the city. And I like to show this chart because it just shows you in, in general, the process of doing business with the city from vendor registration all the way around to payment and research. And let me just take a step back. So my, my role here at the city of Houston as a business development manager is to ensure that businesses understand the process and are able to navigate with doing business, not just with us as an agency, the city of Houston, but just business in general. And I manage the main bulk of our business development programs. And so I do offer one on one counseling for folks who are looking for strategies on how they can develop their business, but also how they can get their business prepared to do business with the city. And so this is a chart that we use. And in the middle I have is research because research is key in everything that you do so that you know what to bid search for where you need to go for pre-bid conferences and really to make this whole circle that you see this cycle uh, actually run. So the first step on the next slide is vendor registration. So anybody who wants to do business with the city must be a registered vendor. And all the information that I'm sharing with you today, there is no cost to it. There's no cost to vendor registration. There is no cost to certification with us. So vendor registration, it's a real easy process. You'll go to our, um, on that number one, you'll see purchasing.houstontx.gov. That's one website for the city of Houston that you want to always remember, have bookmarked on your webs, on your web pages, because that's gonna take, contain all the information regarding procurement with us. So you're gonna register to be a vendor. What you'll do is you'll create a, a vendor profile. You'll also scan a W9 form and you'll just send it to the email address that you see there. 
And then once you do that, I would say allow between 24 to 48 hours, business days that is, and then you'll receive your supplier number, which is your vendor number, which now says you are cleared to do business with the city. And when we talk about doing business with the city, there are various different levels, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But this is your first step, and this is through our strategic purchasing division. Our, um, we call it SPD for short, we use a lot of acronyms. So what they do is they issue out the bids and proposals, they do the price changing, all anything regarding the procurement for the city of Houston, the buying for the city of Houston, they are going to facilitate. Next slide. And so going back to our uh, cycle, you wanna be able to search for bids. You're going to do, do that at the same website that we just discussed, the purchasing.houstontx.gov. And so all of our bid listings are going to be available at this website. And you can search by description. You can search by, you can just put in some keywords and you'll be able to see it there. Or if you just want to see what's currently available, you can do that as well. Another way to search for bids is through the OBO eBlast. We send that out month on a weekly basis every Monday, and that will list all the current bid solicitations for the city of Houston and some of our local partners. You can also check the Houston Business Journal, as well as the Municipal Access Channel. And then our three departments, our major buying departments, Houston Public Works, which Think about that's the department that does all of our roads, uh, water, all those major construction that you see here happening in the city is Houston Public Works Department. General Services Department is the, the department that manages all of the city properties. And we have several buildings throughout the city, so they manage that. And then HAS stands for Houston Airport Systems. So any contracts, of construction over 500,000, those three city departments handle on their own. Anything else is done through our SPD. But you will see those solicitation bids still on purchasing.houstontx.gov. So once you begin to search for bids, we're going to back it back up to the, the previous slide. Once you begin to search for bids, when you find one that's interesting to you, you click on that bid and you want to attend the pre-bid conference meeting. And so what that means, you're gonna read the bid proposal before attending, be prepared to network, whether it's an in-person or virtual, and then you wanna ask questions to get clarification on the solicitation. And so it's especially important when you are a subcontractor because whoever's going to be the prime contractor, meaning the company that is going to have the actual contract with the city of Houston, they have to put, when they submit their bid, who they are subcontracting that work out to. And so the pre-bid conference is the main place that you're going to meet those primes, and you'll be able to network with them and then um, schedule a meeting, send your capability statement, however you network. That's where you want to be able to network who the potential prime may be and make sure you get your information to them because at that pre-bid meeting, that's where we're looking for their subcontractors. Now we can go to the next slide. So when we talk about the different types of solicitations, we have P card, which means purchase procurement card, which is another word for credit card. So those are purchases less than $3,000. Now those are the only purchases that you're going to see that are not, they don't have to go up for bid and there's no really quotes needed. They can choose whomever they want to work with. So think about opportunities where if, a department maybe has new employees and they want to order a few polo shirts. So maybe if you provide embroidery services or those type of uniforms, that's an area where you can actually do business with the city. It's really easy and you can contact them and purchase and you can provide those shirts for them and they give you their credit cards, just like a regular credit card transaction. And then that's an opportunity for you to do business. Now informal bids are gonna go between three and 50,000. These are gonna go uh, electronically as well as the RFPs and the formal bids, the other three that you see. In formal bids, you'll also see them on our website, which I have a, a slide that I'll show you in just a second. But those, what they're going to do is they'll have to email you. So based on your NAICS codes or your NIGP codes, when you filled out for your vendor profile, 
when you fill out those codes, make sure that you are identifying yourself by all the codes that, that relate to what product, products or services that you provide. Because when there's informal bid opportunities, they're going to send you an email to let you know that here's an opportunity based on your NIGP code. And so you, you can bid for those. And there was some just recently that I saw that um, they were asking for projectors. So if you were someone who provided projectors, they only needed two, and that was an informal bid. So there's, I want you to understand there's a lot of opportunities to do business with the, the city, whether you are a small company, large, growing, or whatever, there's different opportunities. And then you have the formal bids, which are 50,000 and above. And then there's RFP which are requests for proposals, and that's based on your expertise. So what, they're, what we're pretty much asking for is, this is what we want done. Can you tell us how much you would charge for this to be done? So think about things that would provide or ask for professional services. It could be legal um, services that are being asked for, anything that's technical that would depend on someone's expertise in that project being um, uh, communicated and, and completed. So we'll go to the next slide. In here, I just wanted to give you an example of the different types of, of those solicit solicitations. So when we look at a formal bid, you'll see it, and these are actual bids that are uh, out. So you'll see when the bid is due, the date and the time. And remember, all this is done electronically. So if the bid is due at 10.30 a.m. and you try to submit it at 10.31 a.m., you have just disqualified yourself. And so when we look at this bid, it shows you weed mowing, debris removal, and other services. That S number is gonna be the actual uh, bid solicitation number. So if you have any questions with the buyer or anyone, you're gonna to refer to that solicitation through that number, not the title. That 20% tells you the goal that's on it. So it has a 20% MWBE goal. And then it lets you know that it's from the Department of Neighborhood. So that is a department that's seeking it. Now our SPD department is securing this, um, this project for the Department of Neighborhoods. And you can see here, it's looking up to six contracts for this project. It has the buyer's name on there and their contact information. That is a person that you want to communicate with, with with a particular solicitation. You always look for the buyer's information. However, you always want to make sure that you are not contacting them in the no contact period. And that will be uh, identified on the solicitation because if you contact them during that time, then you will be disqualified. And then you'll also see there is the pre-bid meeting of what happened. So the pre-bid meeting was on April 18th. So it give, this gives you an idea that the pre-bid meetings occur, this one is about a month in advance. Some of them occur two weeks, some of them can be earlier. So you always wanna be in the process of making sure that you are looking for bids on a constant basis. I always tell people a weekly basis. Now, as a, a vendor with the city, anytime there's a project that's coming out, outside of those lower bids, those P-card bid, the P-card opportunities, they will send you an email to alert you based on your next or your NIGP codes, this opportunity is available. But I still advise people, technology works when it wants to work, right? So always make sure that you pick a day of the week and just check those bids to make sure because sometimes the bids can be layered. And there may be a subcontracting opportunity there for you that you may be missing or it may not have contacted you about. So that's just my advice when you are looking to do business with the city and especially as a subcontractor. And then you'll see here the other two examples, a request for a proposal, and that one is for software solutions and services for tracking of uh, emergency medical and personal compliance and online continuing educational training. So this is just giving you an idea of the different types of solicitations that are out there, the wide range. You see the informal bid is for upholstery and rug cleaning, and it's for 10, um, 10 library locations. And if you were to click on that, then you would see they actually have pictures that show you exactly what they want to be cleaned. So always look at that solicitation read it thoroughly and again my advice is if you're interested in that solicitation make sure you go to that pre-bid meeting and be ready to network 
And so we'll move to the next slide because what I want to do is show you what it looks like. So when you log on to purchasing.houstontx.gov and then you click on search for bids, the upcoming bids or current bids out there, this is what the page is going to look like. And you'll see on the left hand side, the bid number, that's how you'll refer to the bid if you have any questions. And then you see the bid description. Those are hyperlinks. You'll just click on one of those, whatever you're interested in, and that will take you directly to the information in regards to that bid. And on some of them, you'll see a lot of different things. You'll see a presentation. You might see uh, amendments that have been made to that bid, but you'll also see everyone who has attended that pre-bid conference. So if you want, maybe you didn't get some information from somebody who attended that pre-bid conference and you wanna contact them, you can go there and look. And then you'll see the department that's requesting it, the due date, and that time left. Some days that works and some days that doesn't. So it's basically a countdown. And then you have the buyer email just right there. So if you have any questions, then you know there's a buyer where you can find the buyer's uh, email. And again, it's labeled C, slit, sealed bids, which are our formal bids, or at the top, informal procurement, which are our informal bids, is in the middle. And then you'll see the request for proposals down uh, listed thirdly. So that if we go to the next slide, if we were to click on one of those, then this is what you'll see, the entire invitation to bid. And so what you want to do is make sure you're looking at that NIGP code. So it's showing you all the NIGP codes that qualify for that particular solicitation. It's showing you the MWBE goal percentage, the 20%, and there it has that buyer's information. And this is just the um, first page of the invitation to bid from that square that I showed you earlier with the, the weed mowing uh, debris removal uh, invitation or solicitation. And all the bid is gonna have all the information, the scope of work. So read it thoroughly. Some will be small or short and some could be long. I think I've seen the largest one I've seen was maybe 172 pages. And I've also seen one for one page. So just know that the bid solicitations will be different. There's really no standard to the number of pages or what's uh, all there included. So we'll move to the next slide. So, and we're still going in our, our cycle that I showed you. So once you go find the solicitation, if you are looking to be the prime contractor, you follow the prompts and, and submit your bid online. Or if you're a subcontractor, then you have sub, uh, submitted your information to the potential prime contractor. And if they have won the contract, then it goes through the award policy process. And then you'll see there that SPD is responsible for ensuring that everything is following in ordinance, the city of ordinance, uh, and everything, the policies and procedures in regards to that contract. And then if we come to the part where uh, bullet point two, if there are two or more bids that are equal in respects, the contract shall be awarded in the following priority. So if you've ever heard of the Houston, Higher Houston First, HHF, this is where that comes into play. And what that basically means that if you get that designation, which that you do have to apply, just being in city, city of Houston limits does not qualify you for that, right? So you have to apply for the higher Houston first designation. So if you apply for that and you have uh, been, been designated as a higher Houston first business and just say, I'm competing with you uh, on the contract and I am from Beaumont, because you have that designation, if our bids are equal, and even if you're maybe two or 3% higher than I am, because you have that higher Houston first designation, you would win the bid over me because I am not local, I'm, I'm in Beaumont. So that's where that higher Houston first comes into play. And then if it's not, if, if we're not going Houston versus Beaumont, then the second thing is the state of Texas and then all other business entities. And then SPD after that awards the payment. And so in order for you to be paid, then it has to go up for city council approval. And they will look at that. They will see if the contract has been in compliance, meaning if you are the prime and you had a 20% goal, to get a minority or woman owned business? Did you follow that goal? Did you follow that goal and, and actually utilize those subcontractors or subcontractor on that contract in accordance to what you, the contract that you had with them to use it? Then that's what they're looking at. And what you'll do is you'll get a rating on how you performed on that contract. And so 
all that information goes up and city council then approves if you get paid or not. And so, and they rate your performance and they'll have all that information to see like, oh, okay, this person did perform, they went above the goal and, or they went under the goal. They'll just evaluate all of how you performed on that contract to determine whether or not you get paid. So the next slide, just kind of bringing it back to full circle. So we talked about the vendor registration. We talked about how to search for bids. We talked about attending the pre-bid conference so that you can network. And especially if you're going to be a subcontractor, you have to network to let folks know that you uh, want to participate on that bid. Then we talked about the contract bid, what it is to be awarded, performing on that bid in payment. And so that all goes back into the circle. Then you start all over again with the vendor registration and update. And we do that because even when you perform on a contract, maybe there are some services that you were acquired in that process. So you always wanna make sure that your vendor registration, your vendor profile that you completed from this, our very step one, that you update that. So if you've added any additional products or services, you wanna make sure that you add those NIGP codes to your profile because you never want to be in the position where you're bidding for something and you don't have those codes on your profile, then that will uh, hinder you getting that, that, um, that award. So just make sure you keep your vendor registration up to date. Make sure your contact information is up to date as well. I know sometimes as time goes by, things may change and we forget to update. Just keep that vendor profile uh, updated so that you don't miss out on any of those opportunities. And so we'll go to the next slide because I want to talk about the research part. So with the research part, here's where you can go. And what I always tell people is, you have the current bids that we looked at earlier, right? How, what that page looks like. But you also, before the bidding process takes place, you wanna research what opportunities are there at the city of Houston that have been in the past, because everything runs on a pattern. And so when you go to that same website, purchasing.houstontx.gov, you can click on search for bids, but you will see this pop up, the bid search. Here, and I have circled it for you, you can put in keywords. And so whatever your business is, you can put in those keywords and then it'll bring up past bids. And what I encourage folks to do is click on some of those past bids and see what it's requiring for you. When was that bid posted? Because if it was a three-year contract and maybe they're in their second year, then you wanna get ready because that might be that same solicitation might be renewable or might be coming up again. So you wanna get prepared. Again, you will still see the buyer's information there, and you can always reach out to that buyer and say, you know, I see this bid that happened, you know, last year. When will this, is this, this particular solicitation going to be renewed? And is there any information you can share with me? Because you always want to be prepared. When you see those bid solicitations, they get put out at least two weeks in advance. But to actually submit a bid is a lot of work and time. And if you don't have the staff that's dedicated to do that, then you want to make sure that you can be able to submit a bid for that. So you want to always be on the proactive side of knowing, OK, I know this is coming up. This will help me to get prepared. Right. And then also from another standpoint, I get a lot of questions that people may ask. What does the city buy? Do they buy my services? This is another way that you can see how they what services they buy for you from will they actually use your services? And then if so, how? And be liberal in this, because sometimes there's wording that we have in our head and we might put it in here and it's not there, but there might be another term that the city uses that is for your services. So just think about if you're in the apparel or uniform, maybe you provide embroidery and you might put in embroidery and it might not bring up embroidery, right? But because the terms are used, uniforms or apparel. So that would be the search term. So this is a way just for you to kind of get your feel and looking for that and see what opportunities are available. And again, use that where it shows you the department that's buying it because that gives you insight into this department is using my services. So therefore, 
if you see any advertisements or any events that come through and that particular department is coming to an event, then you wanna make sure that you show up because you know that's a department that buys your services or your products and you wanna be able to connect with them so that you can be proactive and know possibly what's coming up in the future and what do they look for uh, in a vendor when they are um, so submitting their solicitations. So that's just one way to do your research. And the next slide is another way also to do the research. So you can go into uh, houston.mwdbe.com. And this is the site where you would go to be, become certified, but also where you can look up current contracts and get the information. So for instance, you can use the same search description like we did in the previous slide and put in apparel or uniforms, or you can, um, you can search by, if you know the prime contractor and just say, I noticed that this person gets a lot of the contracts. Let me see what contracts they have available, what contracts they're working on. You can search it by prime contractor. You can search it by dates, department, all those different things. But anyway, what this will do is bring up and it'll let you know here who's the buying department. It will also let you know how much that contract was worth. It lets you know the dates of that contract. And so this one in particular is one on uniforms. And we see that the contract is from 2018 to 2023, right? So we know that is what a five year contract. So that's giving us idea that, okay, so these apparel uniforms typically run in five year terms. And it's letting you know how much the contract was. So this contract was for $123,000. It had 11% gold on it, which equated to 13,000. Uh, 500 on it. So then you can say, kind of assess, is this, if I provide uniforms, is this worth me doing business, right? What are the contract, the amount of the contracts are? So you'll be able to see that. And you can see here that the prime contractor was census. And so census on this particular contract used 35% of the goal instead of 11%. So they are above the goal usage. So as a subcontractor, this would tell me if I provide any type of uniform services, that this is a, con a prime contractor that I would want to contact and, and build a relationship with because they get a five-year city, city contract. I would like to be the sub the next time this contract is available, but also that if they're above the goal, this is more opportunity for me to make more money with this particular company because they're generous in their goal. So this just gives you the information and then you'll also see it list the subcontractors. So then as a subcontractor, I know who my competition is because they're using um, that company down there. So then I'm gonna research that company and see what they provide to find my competitive advantage and how that lies with Centis and with the subcontractor. So we'll go to the next slide. And then this is just the information, a touch on the information that I shared earlier about the major de buying departments of the city of Houston, SPD, General Services, Houston Public Works, and Air Houston Airport Systems. It just gives you a synopsis of what those particular departments buy. SPD does all of the procurements, general services, what I mentioned earlier, the maintenance and remodeling of our city buildings and utilities, Houston Airport Systems, anything dealing with the airport and then Houston Public Works with the water repair and maintenance of streets and bridges and uh, different utility systems. Next slide. So I mentioned earlier about the certifications. And so these are the certifications that the city of Houston provides. So we certify in the areas of minority woman owned small and our small is only for construction related industries as well as persons with disabilities, disadvantage in AC, the AC stands for airport concessions. So any, think of restaurants, those makeup counters, any concessions that you see in the airports, there is a certification for that as well. We do provide the hub that's used for uh, your state uh, institutions. And then we recognize the LGBTQ BE certification in our directory. 
And so you'll see in that blue box, the darker blue box, those are the benefits of being certified with the city of Houston. You're listed in our directory, which is accessed by various different prime contractors and companies, not just in city in the city of Houston, but all over. Because uh, we remember to do business with the city, anybody can do business. So we do have a lot of folks who come from out of state to do business with the city. And when they're looking for subcontractors, they come directly to our uh, directory to find them. And you can see uh, as well that uh, for the fiscal year 22 last year, over $662 million was awarded to our certified firms. And then in the box above the goals, so these are our standard goals on contracts. So 34% for construction contracts over a million, 11% on goods and services over 100,000, and then professional services, think of anything that has a license. So legal work, uh, architecture, engineering, those type of professional services has a 24% MWBE goal on them. And, um, and before we go to the next slide, I just wanna mention too, that with your city of Houston certification, it is reciprocal. So a lot of your other government agencies will uh, accept our certification as well as private sector. And to add to that, the 2024 uh, college playoff championship game is coming here to Houston. Houston is hosting it. And they are looking for certified firms to work with. So if you are not certified with the city, if you're not certified with the city of Houston and you want to take advantage of those opportunities, definitely fill out that certification now because they do have a lot of opportunities and we can put you on the fast track so that you don't miss out on those opportunities. So anybody who is not certified, who wants to take advantage of those uh, college playoff opportunities, when you complete the application, it's gonna have a section 5.F. It's gonna ask you, how'd you hear about the certification? Make sure you put in 2024 college playoff game and that way we'll make sure that your certification application gets fast tracked so that you can take advantage of those opportunities. So we'll move to the next slide. And so I just wanna show you just the benefits of being certified. This was from the end of fiscal year, towards the end of fiscal year 22, we had over 4,700 firms in our database that were certified. We're well past, well over 5,000 now. And then you, again, you see the amount of uh, award amount of the amount that went to our certified vendors in those particular areas. This is another way for you also to do your research is to see what is the opportunity. So it tells you the average award amount per vendor. So if you're in architectural engineering, the average per vendor is 265,000. That gives you an opportunity to say, is that worth me doing business with the city? If $265,000 is not a big number to you, then maybe you can weigh that your options and say, well, maybe I don't wanna place a bid with them. But that's what this will help you do. And also for you to see the percentage of utilization and just to know what's available out there and you can gauge whether or not how you wanna approach doing business with the city. The next slide just breaks it down even further into showing you the amounts awarded to prime versus uh, subcontractors. And also you'll see prime self-performing. And what that means is that if you are sort of, we have some certified contractors who are able to go after primes, right? So if you are a, a certified business owner with the city of Houston and you are awarded the, prime, the contract, so you are the prime contractor, you can perform up to 50% of that goal. So we, I showed you earlier there was a contract with 20%. So if I was a certified firm, I got that um, that contract, I can perform up to 10% and then I only have to sub 10% of that out. Instead of me being a non-certified firm, I'd have to sub 20%. So that's a benefit, another benefit of being a certified firm. And then you can see this chart just breaks it down as far as construction, professional services and goods and services into ethnicity and race in the amounts of those particular contracts. And all this information can be found on our website under reports. You'll see that and that will help you to further do some research in doing business with the city. And then the next slide just shows you the other aspect of our office. So when I showed you that 
slide at the beginning that had the four different boxes of what our office does. This is the contract compliance. And so this department just ensures that um, all the programs and all the projects that our certified firms are working on are following the compliance of that. So they look at prevailing, prevailing wages as well as the EEO compliance. And they also do on-site visits and they do interviews on construction sites to ensure people are getting paid accordingly and um, other things as well. So all the information as we move to the next slide that I share with you today can be found uh, on our webpage. So if we go to the next slide, you'll see the link there in that long green box. You can go there. That will walk you through everything that I said. I know I went pretty quickly. So if you want to take some time to, to really kind of hone in on those different aspects that I showed or shared with you earlier, then you can go to, to our portal, our Procurement 101 portal, and it will walk you through that process of uh, what I shared today. And this last slide just gives you the links to the websites. So it has our website, Again, the uh, the link to the video that I the videos that I just mentioned previously on the previous slide, our SPD department, as well as HPW general services and airport, uh, the three major buying departments. So if you want to go to their sites and see what they have available, then you have all of those websites right there for you. So if you want to connect with us. Um, Outside of this, we do at the la very last slide, you can see our social media handles. We'll always post information in regards to what our office is doing, resources, services, and upcoming events. Um, and to mention, I think we have an event next Thursday. So for small businesses, there's a lot of opportunity for you to do business in the Caribbean. And we have a workshop um, about that that's gonna happen um, at the University of Houston downtown next Thursday. So you can always keep up with what we're doing by connecting with us on social media. So that is all I have for you today. So Marchette, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Portia. Oh my goodness, that was a lot of detailed information. Uh, and we truly thank you all so much for joining us, all 100 plus of you. Um, I want to mention our uh, Salute to Minorities in Construction Luncheon. It will take place on Tuesday, June 13th at the Junior League of Houston. You see the flyer on your screen. Um, please screenshot or take a picture of uh, the link so that you can register. You do not want to miss uh, our keynote speaker, Miss Adrian Trimble. She is a powerhouse um, in this business community. So you certainly want uh, to be a part of it. You also will see that one of our honorees you just heard from. So uh, Portia Jackson will be uh, honored for her work, this such work, uh, during our uh, salute luncheon. So again, please register today. Uh, the, the information is on the screen. If you have any questions, certainly feel free to call our office um, and we will certainly um, answer any questions you may have. Now we're gonna get into um, our Q&A for the day. And I see you all have been blowing this chat up and I'm loving it. So I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Deidre and Tanya and ask them to uh, facilitate our Q&A at this time. Ladies. All righty, so with, for the sake of time, let's wrap all these three questions together from Ms. Patricia Alcarez. Um, her first question is, is there a charge for using these resources? And secondly, do we have to use subcontractors that are registered with the city or can we use our own subcontractors? There is no charge. And for city contracts, you must use city of Houston subcontractors to count towards the goal. Now you can always use additional subcontractors, but to count towards the goal, they have to be city certified. Okay. Um, someone asked, uh, what is the difference between an informal and formal bid? And uh, maybe that um, slide would help explain it when you did all of the contract vehicles. Yes. So if we go to a one, maybe slide eight, possibly. Mm -hmm. 
then you'll see the difference between um, the informal bid is the amounts of the bid. So informal is going to be three to 50 and formal is going to be anything over 50. There you go. That, there we go. Yeah. Right there. Okay. All right. So it's on the value. Yes. The estimated value of the project. Okay. Yes. Are there any SDVOSB goals, service disabled vet? No, so the goals are going to be minority woman owned and small business. We do not certify in that particular certification mentioned our disabled vets would count towards our certification. That is the persons with disabilities, the uh, PDBE certification, and there are contracts that have PDBE goals on them. And just to reiterate. The city of Houston to count towards the goal, you must be city of Houston certified. So it's only going to be the certifications that we issue that will count towards the actual goal. Thank you. Okay. Um, Miss, hold on, Deidre, one second. Uh, Miss Renika, can you put in the chat what link are you referring to? Is it for salute? I see you said, can you please add the link? For registration here, or will it be sent via email? What link are you referring to, ma'am? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, D. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I thought she was talking about the registration link, but it would be on the PowerPoint when we send it, right? Yes. If okay. if, if she's talking about this presentation, yes. If she wants salute, she can contact us and we'll be happy Absolutely. to send her the link. Okay. Yes. Yeah. There okay. are a couple of questions that we may have to refer back to a slide um, mm -hmm. as far as um, the contract types. So there's a question we manufacture 100% compost, compostable, uh, eco friendly trash bags, which is not a plastic. Whom do I have to contact for my product as it is not a regular item? And secondly, I am looking on the city of Houston contracts database for contract types that are professional services and professional services exempt. What does exempt mean? Professional services exempt. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not aware of that terminology being used in a contract. Mm -hmm. So, if you're asking, so I guess let me start with when the city of Houston, outside of the P cards, right? When we're looking for services, it's, it's advertised through a bid solicitation. So, if you don't see an opportunity at that time, that means the city is not looking to procure that item at that time. And so, that's why you want to make sure that you check at least once a week to see what the city is asking for saying hey we want to purchase this item or have this service done please all those interested please send that information now if you are wanting to introduce a new product to the city then that's where you want to do your research and i can assist you with that so we can uh, get you connected to the right department now keep in mind just because you have a product that you want to introduce to the city does not mean by meeting with you, the city is going to now want to purchase that product. And some buyers will not take meetings because they want to make sure that they are um, vetted fairly, yeah, vetted, but also fairly um, given the information out, right? So just because you meet with them and then they can't just purchase and put out a bid just because they want to purchase your product. It has to be fair for everybody has the opportunity to, to bid on that particular project. And because you have to remember that the folks who are buyers have a lot of different contracts or bid solicitations assigned to them. So meeting with them may not be an immediate thing because they have to process those solicitations. But if you have a new product, feel free to contact me and then we can talk about a strategy and how you can introduce that product to see if that's something the city wants to procure. Okay, thank you. One question from Ramona is working with the city of Houston, 
Do our company have to be in the city of Houston surrounding area? If so, what is the process? And I'm not sure if she's talking about bidding or getting certified, because that's two different answers. So if you're talking about bidding, anybody can do business with the city of Houston. Um, we have people from California who may be on a bid, right? So it doesn't matter where you're located, as long as you are registered to be a city vendor, then that quali that's the first qualifier in doing business with the city. If you're talking about certification, you have to be within our 10 county service area. If you're not, you have to have a significant presence, meaning at least at least 20% of your staff is located in the Houston area to be able to be eligible for uh, certification. Correct, and you would have to be for profit, correct? Correct, no nonprofits. All righty. That was another question. Let's see. Now, nonprofits can bid on solicitations, but we do not certify nonprofits. Right. Okay. If interested in being a subcontractor, do I have to be named on the bid at the time the prime submits? Or can I request to be a subcontractor after the bid is awarded? So it's best to be on at the time that the bid is submitted. There are times where if someone who was listed as the contract starts, because keep in mind, you may be a contract may be awarded, but it may not actually start until maybe six months later, maybe a year later. So whomever is as a subcontractor, sometimes during that process of getting started, that subcontractor may no longer may not be able to perform anymore on that contract. So then whoever is the prime would have to replace that subcontractor. So that's the, the time frame that they can add somebody to the uh, contract through a deviation form. But if the contract has already been awarded and that prime is using those subs, the probability of you being added is probably not going to happen unless there's something where they needed additional people and the subcontractors aren't able to perform that service. Because once they're listed on that bid and that bid is awarded, that's saying these are the people that we have vetted that, that are going to perform on that contract. So as a subcontractor, don't wait till after a contract is performed because it's already been determine who's going to work on that contract. Try to get on that beforehand. But there are exceptions, as just explained, that you can get on there after a contract has been awarded. But your best success is going to be before it's awarded. Right. And you're a valid certified firm if you were certified through the city of Houston and not um, anywhere else. Correct. Okay, but we can, you can do the reciprocity with state of Texas, correct? So on most city contracts, you're going to see what certifications are being accepted for that contract. So if you see MWBE, only MWBE has been accepted. Right. If you have a hub, then you would have to see if that contract says they're accepting hub certification, then that's where your hub will come into place. But if it, if you don't see hub on there, hub contract, if the hub certification is not being accepted. If you don't see SBE on there, the SBE is not being accepted. Correct. I meant if you get certified through the city. Oh, you yes. You get yes. certified with the state of Texas. And there are various other in agencies that accept the city like yes. HCC and Fort Bend ISD, et cetera. Mm -hmm. The port, yes. a lot of um, yes. other government agencies as well as private agencies. And again, back to the 2024 um, college game that's coming. Just another example of the different folks who accept our certifications. Absolutely. And it's taking a, a little while to get it certified for the first time. But we, yeah. you're actively working on it. All that's still good. So it's it's good to get in and be proactive. Yes. So here's a question, um, Dr. PJ. Do you have to be a business a certain number of years to do business with the city of Houston, or would work experience be taking and taken into consideration? The solicitations are very clear. 
So each solicitation is going to be different. Some solicitations it will tell you is required for you to be in business this amount of years. It could say five years, one could say seven, one could say two, one could say one. If it doesn't say anything, then it doesn't matter how long you've been in business. So it's going to depend on the solicitation. Mm -hmm. Another question is, I have been waiting uh, for the completion of my certification process since November. How can I fast track my wait period? Mm -hmm. So we can't fast track your wait period, but if you can contact me so I can look in to see if there was an issue uh, with your certification and kind of track and see where it's at, we can do it that way. Okay. Now, keep in mind, if you if you're new to certification and you want your certification uh, fast tracked and you're going to be a vendor with that playoff, then make sure you indicate that on your on your application. Okay. okay. And there's a question I'm confused about. Can a company have more than one user on their account? Um, if you're talking about your certification profile, yes, you can okay. have um, more than one user. Some people have, uh, you'll have the owner who's a user, but maybe there's an admin who checks on the information and updates it. That's totally fine. If that's the question you were asking. Mm. Okay. All right. Here's a question just for clarification. Are minority men owned businesses excluded? Minority uh, certification is for race. It does. It's strictly on race, so that includes women and men. The M, the WBE means only women. So no, there is no exclusion on men having the MBE because it's strictly about race, not gender. Okay. And a lady wants to know her company is based in Katy. Is that eligible for the city of Houston? So the, the area, the surrounding areas is, uh, needs clarification. Yes, we service about 10 counties. Mm -hmm. Um, and Katie is included in that county unless they. I don't know what's happening in Katie, but unless y'all moved over there to San Antonio, then no, okay. but, um, <laughs> but yes, Katie is the county is included Fort Bend and, um. I used to could name all the, the 10 counties yeah. offhand, but not today. I don't think it's working, but yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. That is not a problem. Uh, Miss <laughs> Allie Elliott, you asked for the link for salute. It's on your screen. Um, please take a picture of that screenshot that thank you so much for asking. We do appreciate it. Um, I, I think you said it was a little blurry. So HTTPS. HCC.IDLoom.Events slash 2023 salute. And I'm looking forward to salute. And I appreciate yeah, the yeah. honor and all that are on the call. I hope to see y'all there. Absolutely. Ready? Absolutely. We are certainly looking forward to it. Okay, Dr. PJ, there's a gentleman who does video content and he seems to be in the same predicament as the lady with the, the bags. So, you know, you have your, your contact information's there. I guess you're the, the starting point for specialty type um, businesses. So he has, um, his question is, you have to remind yes. me about. He's a video content. He does uh -huh. video content for all types of organizations. Okay. Whom we have to contact to offer our products and creative services. Please advise. Okay. So your first um, contact would be HTV. That's Houston TV. Okay. The city has uh, a department that handles all of the audio visual for the various different departments. So that's your first contact. Um, there are times where bids go up for that particular area. So you still want to check those. But if you're looking for opportunities that might be um, smaller in value, 
HTV is a place to start, but also the different departments. There, when you go to the city's general webpage, which is HoustonTX.gov, there's a Google search engine. In that search engine, you can put in departments. It'll bring up departments and directors. That will be the listing, uh, with, which includes the email address of all the city of Houston department and directors and their webpage. So, for instance, you can go there and, and ask, because this might be a smaller purchase, right, for under the P card level, mm -hmm. and you can ask, do they have any events where they would need video, visual, audio visual um, equipment or services, and whom to talk to in that particular department? Because your smaller purchases, they are not advertised, so it's really about making those connections with the different departments. And if you go there to that particular web page, that way you can look at that at their website and determine like, is this a good? This department probably, if they put on events, right? Mm -hmm. So that will give you a cue that okay, they put on events, they might need my services. Let me reach out to them and and tell them what I can provide and and see when their next events are. In, in, in there. And there's also um, a special events department as well with the city of Houston that you can reach out to. Now, they, I think they are under contract currently with um, audiovisual, but it doesn't hurt to ask how long that contract is and what they look for in vendors so that when that contract ends, then you'll have some insight on how to move forward after that. Thank you. Uh, do we have any I'm more questions in these last few minutes, ladies? I see one here regarding the area on CC, deciding on payment. Are you saying there is a possibility that you, if you complete the job and won't be paid because someone didn't like your performance? Well, it is a possibility. City Council has to vote. But I'm sure everybody on this call would not do a poor job, right? So that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, okay. <laughs> Is that it for questions? It seems like I'm reading answers, so I'm I'm still scrolling. Okay. And the presentation will be made available. So any yes. links that were shared initially will be embedded in the presentation. Yes, if you were a registered participant for this call, you will receive uh, the presentation. Okay. Um, are P card purchases the same as micro purchases? P card purchases is a credit card. So anything less than 3000. Okay. Here's a question that just popped up. I have submitted my application on yesterday. Now what? How do I go about getting contacted or trying to bid? Oh, that's it. Submitted what application? For which are you mm -hmm. talking about certification? Are you talking about your vendor profile? Certification. Certification. Okay. So you submit your application for certification. So now you just have to wait for the application to go through the process. You are more than welcome to search for bids because remember, not everybody has to be certified. Certified is not a requirement to do business with the city. Remember we talked about folks from California and different places being able to do business with the city. And so that is not a requirement for you to do business with the city. You can go ahead and look for uh, opportunities. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, where do you a... look? Where do you look? So you you'll go to purchasing.houstontx.gov, and I think as they said before, mm -hmm. uh, presentation will be emailed to y'all, so y'all have all the links there. So if you missed any of that information that was presented before, you'll have everything sent to you via email, and you can follow up. Then if you have any questions. The presentation also includes my contact information and you can just reach out to me and we'll talk. Yes, and someone wants to know how to get an appointment for help updating their certification and strategy sessions and that's what the MBDA is here for. So contact us off of the PowerPoint here. Absolutely. 
Yeah. So thank you so much, Dr. PJ. Um, for all of our attendees, you will see uh, Portia's uh, information on the screen. Please, again, screenshot it, take a picture, do what you must. Um, as she said, email is the best way to reach her. So Portia.Jackson at HoustonTX.gov. Um, again, thank you all so much for attending this webinar. Um, I know somebody asked, when will we offer it again? Uh, the city's o OBO office is always a huge hit for us on these subs and sandwiches webinars. Um, so it will be again soon, uh, but you'll have to wait for that. <laughs> so thank you all so much. We do appreciate you and enjoy the rest of your day.